described the Martian as a love, le love letter to science. Yeah. So do you personally have any love stories with science? Uh, let me see. Well, in, in a broad sense, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I love science. I love what it is. I love what it represents. And the, um, our human beings' curiosity to know more and to know the truth and to pursue the truth at, at all costs. I think it's, I think it's a, a beautiful a beautiful thing, what, what, what science means, yeah. So what field of science interests you the most? Well, uh, I think, I mean, what I'm really, what I've been reading a lot about mm -hmm. recently and what I'm interested in is kind of what the future is going to look like. What, oh. the, what, the, what the near future is going to look like and what the... What distant the, future. What's that? Distant future. Yeah, and the distant like future, long. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, we're... We live in the most interesting times, I think, in the history of man, which is really makes us the luckiest human beings who've ever been alive. I mean, the, the amount of change that's happening on this exponential curve that we're on it, yeah. and, and the speed with which everything is happening um, is, is, is amazing and exciting. And so I, I read a lot about, uh, you know, what futurists are writing and, 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 um, and what they're saying, because I just find it... I find it fascinating. I mean, even like your generation, I was thinking about this this morning, your generation can't even, I mean, the pace of change is so rapid. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just like for you and for my daughters, like they, you know, change is the one constant, you know? It's just, yeah. everything's ha happen happening so incredibly rapidly, but that's what you guys are used to. Um, so, how do you perceive the relationship between Mark, Mark Courtney and Mars in the, in the movie? It's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> okay. Do you think Mars is the villain in the movie? No, I think, I think Mars is what Mars actually is, which is, uh, which is in, in, indifferent to Mark's plight. <laughs> and, uh, which makes Mars kind of a villain, you know. It's, uh, you know, the way Mother Nature is indifferent, yeah. to, in, indifferent to us all and our both harsh and loving. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm, so you've mentioned in previous interviews that the script, the scripts made you laugh out loud. Yeah. So what exactly are your favorite jokes? Uh, well, there are a couple of them that made it into the movie. Um, one of the lines, um, uh, the, well, the, the line, I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that really made me laugh. And, um, and then also when he says, F you, Mars, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. that, that made me laugh. And... Uh, um, the Iron Man bit at the end made uh, me yeah. laugh. Yeah. So, th th yeah, there were those were three off the top of my head that literally had me the laughing top out loud. Three jokes. Yeah. Okay. In the Marshall, your parts were mostly one man's show. How does shooting alone affect the dynamics of performing? Uh, with that, it was the, the big question I think going in for for me was what that would be like um, to do all these scenes by myself and and um, and uh, I mean, luckily, I think I think. Having Ridley Scott as the director and having Ridley right there the whole time kind of yeah. uh, solved a lot of my problems. Um, so I, so I, it was less challenging than I thought just because Ridley was uh, such a great director. Mm -hmm. So there's a saying on the internet that from saying Private Ryan to Interstellar to uh, The Martian, America has spent a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of money to retrieve you. Yes. So which one of these characters do you think faced the worst off? Uh, well, it's probably a toss-up between, between, uh, between Mark Watney and mm. Dr. Mann in <laughs> Interstellar. Dr. Mann, I don't know, that ice planet d did not look like a friendly place to <laughs> yeah. live at all. Um, so I, I think e even, you know, as bad as it was for Mark, I think Dr. Mann's situation was somehow even more bleak. Who do you think is the most retrieved worthy? Uh, well, they're all retrieve worthy. I mean, Dr. Mann turns out to be pretty selfish and <laughs> yeah. uh, pretty horrible, but, uh, but, you know, I think they were all worth the mission. Yeah, they're all human beings. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, you mentioned in previous interviews that you were fascinated with space ex exploration uh -huh. when you were a teenager. So is it part of the reason why you take on the role as an astronaut in the Martian? Absolutely. I always wanted to play an astronaut. I wanted to be an astronaut. And then um, the opportunity came to work with Ridley Scott. Yeah. And that was already, you know, that was a given. That was, a, that sold me immediately. 
Are you a fan of Sir Ridley's works? Of course, Gladiator, <laughs> uh, uh, American Gangster, oh, yeah. Thelma Louise, so many Alien, Blade Runner, so many amazing movies he's done. But did films like The Alien, you know, make you think twice about being an astronaut? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but this one was a little bit different because we didn't have aliens, we didn't oh, have, yeah. it was much more realistic. We have villains in the movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so during the shooting, did you gain any new knowledge about uh, space exploration? Yes. Uh, well, I did a lot of the stunts because everything that I did oh. in the suit, in the space suit and everything, that was, um, that was very informative because it would be, um, it would be so dangerous out there. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, the it's, space amazing. Stuff, huh? it's amazing what these guys do for a living. Um, and um, so just the idea of gravity that we don't think about all the time, day by day, um, just to not have it, it sort of blew my mind. Okay, so did you guys get to see real world astronauts training? We we didn't get we didn't have a lot of time for for real astronaut training um, because I found out about the movie very late <laughs> and I only had two weeks to get ready. Uh, but I just researched online as much as I could. Watch your training videos and... Yep, a lot of training videos, oh. a lot of movies, um, a lot of interviews with astronauts, just anything I could find. So what's your first impression of the script? And did, you make, did it make you laugh out loud? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it was very funny and I didn't expect it to be funny. And I actually thought it was refreshing because sometimes when you're seeing survival stories, it's very intense and very yeah. dramatic. And this kind of had a little bit of both. Yeah, gallows humor, huh? Yeah. So what job would you take if you get the chance to work on a spaceship? Um, a doctor like Bag or a botanist like Mark Worthney? What would you pick? Um, I would still, well, I would probably have to be a botanist like, like <laughs> Mark Wa Yeah, because if I needed to survive, you know, I think I'd want his <laughs> skill set. And did you think Beck would make it on the Mars if, if he was stranded, not, you know, Mr. Worthney? Um, I, I, I like to think that he would, but I'm not sure. <laughs> not I'm not sure. sure. Huh? But I think, I, think he had, I think he had the will to survive. I think he would have the will to survive. Yeah. He would do everything possible. Yeah, because he has an attachment to Miss Johansson. Huh? <laughs> yes, of course. Well, but you have to... He falls in love with her in the middle, on the, on the and trip. And do you think their relationship is different from ordinary office ro ro romance? Well, yes, because... Um, Why is that? I actually asked astronauts whether or not oh. if, you know, real astronauts, what would happen if they fell in love with each other? And they <laughs> said, you know, they would, they would pay a big, big price. So it's very forbidden to do that. Whoa. When you're traveling, you cannot, you know, you can't do that. So that's why it would have to. It was. It would be a secret. Yeah, but in the end, they kind of just, you know, acquiesced their relationship. Yeah, but in the end, because once it became about life and death. Yeah. And sort of, they all just kind of said, you know what? We may never <laughs> came b come back. We have to go save this guy. It's like it doesn't matter at this point. So okay. they just came out with it. Yeah. So. Um, so the Martian has much less, you know, green screen acting, green screen acting than uh, than uh, Captain America. So what's the difference between the, uh, you know, the acting dynamics and more re realis uh, realistic things and, uh, you know, the green uh, screen, green screen things. It's always it's always so much better when you don't have to use a green <laughs> screen because Ridley Scott likes to build the sets and builds everything, you know, all the little details and all the little yeah, buttons. Like Blade Runner. And like, huh? Yeah, and so. For an actor, it's it's amazing. It's like a gold mine because you you everything is there. In the green screen, sometimes you have to just improvise. Yeah, you have, to, you have to like just sort of remember everything and, and keep an eye out. Thank you. That will be all. Thank you. <laughs>